continuing with the same example, we're going to uh, take it a little bit further. Um, the thing that you will see in my counter component is that I have these actions, which are kind of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of typing them out over here. Let's suppose I want to use the same one. There's a possibility I can uh, make a typo over here. This is a string, it has to be exact. So there's a possibility I forget an E or I misspell some action. There's, there's, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. Right now we only have two actions, but we, when you have multiple actions, there's a possibility you can make a typo and it's going to be, it's going to be like a nightmare to try to debug. Uh, you know, you're going to waste some hours or at least an hour trying to find out and you come to a conclusion, it was a simple typo, okay? So it's better to have constants instead of having these string variables, okay? So we'll work on actions in this video and see how do we refactor those things. Okay, so uh, I want my actions to be isolated as well. Uh, these actions should be accessible to any component, uh, any Redux component. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to call it actions, okay? I'm going to call it actions, all right? Um, I'm going to create a file and I'm going to call it index.js. The reason is, um, this will allow me to import this folder and uh, Node.js and JavaScript has a capability that if there is an index.js file, it automatically imports the file without you mentioning the file name, okay? So it's always good to have this. It kind of um, saves some uh, relative path. So uh, you will see I can change the reducers as well later on, but we'll, we'll come to that. So that's why I have an index file. Um, you will see when I import, I just have to mention the folder name. I don't have to mention the file index.js. As long as there is a file called index.js, JavaScript and Node.js automatically understand and import it for you, okay? Anyway, coming back to this, um, I'm going to create some action types. Now, this is the name um, that is, if you look at the documentation, that's what they call these actions. These are called action types. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this and I will call these action types. Action types. This is a technical term uh, that is used for uh, the string, the, um, the actions that we were seeing. These are the action type. This is the property. This is the value that you give in, remember actions are JavaScript objects and they have a property called type. In the type, remember we were mentioning these uh, increment and decrement. So those are the action types. So I'm going to create uh, those variables, those constants, so that I don't have to uh, worry about making a typo in that string. So simply, I'm going to create uh, and export some action types and I will say, uh, let's call it increment, okay? This is going to have the actual value, increment. So I'm going to just copy this one. Okay, similarly, I will do the same thing for decrement. And I will say decrement. And this is going to be, okay, and I'm, I'm exporting these two out. Okay, so these are called action types. Now, where would you generally use them? You can use them if you go back to your uh, component over here. Remember, we are using um, action types over here. So instead of uh, using a string, you can import these and call them over here, okay? But we won't be doing that. Uh, we're going to go a little bit further. And uh, this is the standard conditions. This is the standard practice that you will see in the documentation as well. That's how these are used. Um, they make use of something called action creators. And that's what we will do as well, okay? So action creators are simply functions that return the action type, okay? Now, what does that mean? I'm going to just call action creators. Okay, in the documentation, you will come uh, with the same terms. This is what they call. Um, so I'm going to cover this so that you guys are aware that what, what each one of them actually means, okay? Uh, action creators, as I said, these are simply functions that return your uh, action type, 
Okay, so I'm going to export this so that I can use these action times in my other uh, components. Okay, remember this is a function, so I'll just call it um, increment counter. Okay, I'm going to be using my arrow function syntax. Okay, now what, what what is it going to do? It is going to return the type. So I'm going to say type, oops, I'm going to say type of this action creator would be increment. Okay, please note over here that I'm not using the string increment. Instead, I'm using the constant uh, less amount of typo cannot happen because this is the variable that I'm trying to use. So if this changes, I don't have to worry about anywhere in my code. The only place this is being used is this one, the string over here. So it is recommended use constant so that you know there's a less amount of typo. If you make a typo over here, you will see JavaScript is going to give you an error or in your browser saying the variable doesn't exist because I'm accessing the variable and not the string value. Okay, so that's why it's not in double quotes. I'm referring to this constant over here. Now, uh, so I created an action creator. What does it do? It is a simple function that returns the action type. That's all it does. Okay, similarly, I'll create one for decrement. I will say decrement counter, and I'm going to use the variable decrement, easy. Okay, so here's my actions action types and action creators. Okay, again, uh, this is a little bit more advanced as in like we are refactoring our code, but you have seen in the previous videos, we can do without it as well. But this is recommended, I will highly recommend if you're going to be using Redux in your applications, your applications are going to go grow bigger and bigger. Uh, this is the standard practice, um, try to stick to this one. Okay, anyway, moving forward, we have our action creators, we have our, um, um, action types. Now, how do we use them? We'll go back to our um, counter component. So let's go back to our counter component. In our counter component, I'm still using my, kind of using the hard coding uh, action types. So I'm going to go and remove those. Instead, I'm going to use my action creators that I just um, created. So before I can use them, let's go ahead and import those. I'm going to say import, and I'm going to import from my Redux folder. I'm going to import actions. This is what I was saying. So you see, uh, if you do not have an index.js file in your actions folder, you would have to, or if you had another file, uh, something called action types.js, you would have to mention that file in your relative path. But since the index file is there, I can just mention the folder. The index file is going to be automatically imported. I don't have to worry about that. Um, so I will go ahead and import my increment counter action creator and then decrement counter action creator okay uh, coming down over here this is where i'm using i'm passing i'm dispatching some actions so remember my action creators are going to return these action types so i don't have to do this all i have to do is i'm going to call the increment counter function this is going to return it is going to replace over here and that will take care of that so i'm going to do decrement counter method that I just imported, and this is going to take care on fire, dispatch that action. Okay, um, this is looking good. Let's go ahead and try this out. Um, let me go ahead and refresh this. Increment, looking good, still working. Decrement, still working. Okay, but a lot of thing has happened. We have changed, we have read it in our code. I'm going to remove this. And so that you guys can see, I'm going to close this. If you go back over here, you will see um, now my application is looking a little bit better. I have my components over here, I have my Redux. So anybody coming and seeing this would be like, okay, uh, this application uses Redux. Any code related to Redux will be over here. Okay, uh, I open my app.js. You see it's simple, smaller, uh, no Redux code, nothing is going on over here. Let's go back to our Redux code. I have my store actions reducers okay all three important parts of a redux application all of them are over here all of them separated out store simply has the store just does this remember the store should just create a store and that's it okay coming back to my reducers i have a counter reducer 
And what it does is the same thing gets the action, uh, uh, increment types over here, and then modifies and then uh, updates the state based on that. Uh, one thing over here you will see uh, I'm still using string. So let's go ahead and fix that. I don't want to use these screen, uh, screen, uh, string actions. Again, as I mentioned, uh, can do a typo. So let's go away with it. Um, since we already have our actions, so I'll go ahead and import those. I'll say import uh, from dot dot slash actions. Again, just the folder name. No need to mention the file uh, indexes automatically. This may in this I would want my action types because that's what this is looking for, right? This switch statement is looking for action type. My action type is increment. So instead of a string, I will refer to that variable. Okay, and refer to the variable, and there it is. Okay, uh, no changes, still should work, everything looks good. Okay, the good part about this is, let's suppose later on um, you are over here and somebody comes, oh, you know what, this is too long. Um, let's call it INC and let's call it DEC. Okay, do you think this is going to break our code. This is going to change our code. Absolutely not. You see, increment still works, decrement still works. The reason it is working is because everywhere in the code, we're using this variable. As long as this variable doesn't change, it doesn't matter what value you put over here. Everything is going to work. Okay, so everywhere in my code, I'm referring to the variable at and the only place is this one. If you change the value, everybody in the code is going to receive the same new action type value. Okay, so that's the good part about using constant instead of having a um, string values, uh, using string values. So since I updated this, no issues over here, everything looks good, everything is still working. Okay, now coming back, I have my reducer. Um, reducer has this. Then I have my actions. Actions are divided into two things. Uh, action types. Action types are this constant variables which are defining what are my, what is the type of the action, okay? And I have something extra which are called action creators. This just means these are just simple functions that return the action type. That's all they do. Uh, it might seem uh, redundant code or why I'm doing this, but this is the design pattern that you will see even in the Redux documentation, which I would highly encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, they use a similar pattern, uh, React Redux design pattern. They are using this. So that's why um, if you, if you uh, look into some production level code, uh, some production applications that are using Redux, you will see that they are following the same similar design pattern. So it is better to um, you know get used to the standard practices so that it's not confusing when you look at somebody else's code. Okay, so here's my actions, reducers, and store.